What's up, everybody? It's Make It Make Sense. And as things are heating up for Diddy, now everybody is starting to look at everyone who has had involvement with Diddy. And now, JLo, I guess it's your turn. <laughs> like the video as intro plays because we have a lot to get into. Could somebody please make it make sense? Make it make sense to me in election. Make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Make sense. Make it make sense. You know what was up. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, y'all. So <laughs> I'm sorry. Whenever I see Meek hopping, doing the bunny hop, that still takes me out. Anyway, let's start here because I told you guys I thought this was lame yesterday. If you remember one of Diddy's neighbors, so this dude who has who are, whose family has a ton of money said this. I live right next to him. He do too much. He be like, he be like buses, like big ass buses. You just see all type of shit hop out. Especially at nighttime, like around three o'clock in the morning. Hey, I think it's wild. I'm his neighbor. Yeah, my basketball go over there. I just let it be because I don't want about to go. Yeah, tell stop bringing all the miners over here late at night. No, I told you guys I thought that was lame because if anybody had really any clear indication that there were miners being taken advantage of then if you know it, you kind of need to report it. I felt like he was, you know, not really being authentic when he was doing this. And then his mom came out and said, um, it's her house. Yeah, that is her son. And he was just trolling. Yeah, they right. They fixing to ask him some questions. Exactly. I thought it was stupid. I thought it was like something that a kid would do. Nothing that, yeah, I didn't like it. I, I didn't like it, y'all. Um, we got like over a thousand in the chat. Definitely hit that like button as you come in. You guys, as this live is going, we are probably going to hit the goal of 150,000 subscribers. I think we were super close, like within. No, guys, we are actually technically we are at 150,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. We hit 20,000 on Instagram yesterday. And now we're at 150K on YouTube. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. You don't even know how much. So what's the next goal? 200? <laughs> anyway, I'll, it just, it feels surreal. And uh, I, I thank y'all. I really honestly do. Um, if you're new to the channel, YouTube has brought me out of some pretty dark times, like especially this last year. So uh, I appreciate you guys. I really do. Um. Miss Lacey says, Lord, I'm trying to work and y'all keep going live and I got to keep tuning in. <laughs> well, tell Diddy to stop leaking. It is what it is. No, thank you for being here. I appreciate you. But let's get into J-Lo. So now they are all up in her business. And J-Lo is the kind of person who usually wants people all up in her. All up in her business. <laughs> <laughs> J-Lo wants people all up in her business. She is definitely a person who likes the spotlight. She's married this new man, and he clearly doesn't like it. Ben Affleck looks absolutely done with the spotlight. But J-Lo, she's kind of fine, so he sticks around. But anyway, point is, uh, now everybody's looking at Diddy and J-Lo. It says, inside J-Lo's explosive relationship with P. Diddy, star said rapper was the first man to cheat on her and left him a month before his trial on gun charges but denies he was X who was rough with and manhandled her. Now, technically, a source said it was not Diddy, but let's get into it. Um, Jennifer Lopez once revealed how Sean Diddy Combs was the first man to cheat on her during their tumultuous relationship from 99 to 2001. 
The rap moguls homes in Miami Beach in California. We know that. Um, we know that as well. Also known as P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, or Diddy, or P. Diddy, or Diddy Don't Pee On Me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My bad. I'm supposed to be. Uh... Thank you for the super chat, Gabor. He says, just trolling. Anything for attention. <laughs> um. Okay. My bad. Let me get back. Let me. I'm a, I'm a journalist, like Portia. <sighs> it said Puff Daddy or Diddy, the bad boy for life hit maker, isn't a stranger to scandal. And at the height of his fame, he made tabloid headlines for his tumultuous relationship with J Lo, also 54. The duo bonded over their love of music, and Diddy quickly became the mentor to Jenny from the block. Now, I don't know if this is appropriate anymore, but in the 2000s, we would call that effing for tracks. And when we get into this article a little bit, you'll see where she's reticent to actually say she was in love with this man so it's what she doesn't say y'all so let's get into it uh he was a mentor at a time where her first album was coming out and he was producing it or producing a lot of tracks on it so y'all run those numbers um but after j-lo who has since found happiness with ben affleck detailed her past abusive relationships and her emotional 2024 documentary the greatest love story never told fans speculated she was referring to her ex sean a source is, a source has denied but not j-lo was referring about diddy and that it was the subsequent relationship instead again j-lo didn't say this a source did now what we have heard about diddy is that he put his hands on his first baby mama misa there's allegations that he put his hands on kim porter there's allegations that he put his hands on cassie there's allegations that he put his hands on one of Cassie's friends. There's allegations of a truck or a car that got blown up. There's allegations that Wally got put out of the um put out of a window. So at this point, <sighs> things are really easy to believe. So all these things are allegations, so allegedly, but To show y'all how we have fun and stay out of jail too wow. and make money so anyway um let's keep going it says jennifer who did not identify who had been abusive to her in the past said there were people in my life who said i love you and they didn't do things that were kind of in line with the word love now this let me read to you the second part now this is actually what she said um, being thrown around and manhandled like that is not fun. I mean, I was never in a relationship where I got beat up, thank God, but I've definitely been manhandled and a couple of unsavory things, rough, disrespectful. Fans on Reddit soon suggested that perhaps J-Lo was referring to a relationship with Sean with one person writing. Considering a bunch of allegations of P. Diddy are coming out, I wonder if there's a connection between to speaking out publicly now. Either way, I hope she's doing better now. The um, female has contacted representatives of Jennifer Lopez and Sean Coles for comment. Talking to CBS Sunday Morning in 2019, the singer opened up about her highly publicized romance with Sean, calling it kind of crazy, heightened time in my life. You know, Puffy and I both grew up in the Bronx. He had been in the music businesses and had all of this success. I was starting and making my first album when I met him. He became kind of a mentor to me in that moment. We had this kind of crazy, tumultuous relationship that ended in a bang. Now, y'all... This is why I think she talks in code. I actually really like J-Lo um, to go from, you know, what was she? She was on In Living Color. To go from that to being one of the biggest stars, most recognizable, kudos to her. She has really used what she had to get what she wants. Y'all know I love the Players Club. Anyway, I really love J-Lo. However, this is coded language. He became a mentor to me in that moment. We had kind of crazy, tumultuous relationship that ended in a bang. Yeah, it ended in a bang for that lady that got pop out in the face. It ended in a bang for Shine allegedly taking the fall for that. But it's that coded language. He became kind of a mentor to me in that moment. We had this crazy, tumultuous relationship that ended in a bang. Now, what did she say about the abusive person? She says...
take this off. Jennifer, who do not identify who had been abusive to her in the past, said, there were people in my life who said, I love you, and then didn't do things that were kind of in line with the word love. I take that as coded language for, for brother love, allegedly. But y'all can put in the comments how you feel. Y'all can put in the comments how you feel. Yeah, Ben is miserable. <laughs> uh, yeah, so y'all do the math on that one. But technically, Jennifer has never said anything. And Jennifer is one of those celebrities that really does not put anything out. Everything is very contrived with Jennifer. So even her talking in the documentary, notice that she's never saying that I was in love with this man. She said that she needed him for her for her first album. He was a mentor. Everything was crazy. It was heightened. He cheated on her. And I'm sitting there thinking, how could he be cheating on you, J-Lo, when you were the other woman? He had just had a baby with Kim Porter. But you were shiny and new and everything that he likes, allegedly. And so... Kim has maintained, and y'all can correct me if I'm wrong, that they continued their relationship for a while after that. The problem with Diddy is even after Kim had started moving on with her life, we find out that somebody that Kim started talking to, what was it? Was It, it wasn't Stout. Um, it's the guy that's no longer with us. There's, he was on my list of people who aren't around who were in Diddy's orbit anymore. He was a Def Jam, I think, vice president. Kim started talking to him when when... When Larry, what's his name? Usher's mentor and um, Babyface's partner. What is his name? Oh, Shakir Stewart, yeah. Shakir Stewart was at the wedding of Pebble's ex-husband. Uh, no, not, not Andre. Not Larry Reed. <laughs> L.A. Reed. There we go. Um, L.A. Reed. When Stewart was at the wedding of L.A. Reed, uh, allegedly Diddy came, approached him with some goons, and beat him up really, really bad. He later ended up unaliving himself. But yes, Kim was in a holding pattern. Because she loved Diddy. They had this baby. He's now with J-Lo. J-Lo is over here saying, and I think he cheated on me. He can't cheat on you when technically you were just the woman that he had out front when Kim was the woman he was still with for years. Kim had left Diddy and then got back with him around the time of the twins. He, uh, I love how people play dumb. You know good and goddamn well, J-Lo, that Kim Porter was still in this man's life. The difference was she wasn't allowed to walk the red carpets and you were. And you, even in this article, are saying nothing about being in love with him and everything about it was a business type of relationship. But people like to paint pictures the way they like to paint pictures. So y'all can agree or disagree. I really think that it was some coded language. I do think, wasn't J-Lo also involved with um, Wesley Snipes? Wasn't J-Lo also with Wesley Snipes? And it's alleged that Wesley Snipes was the one who put his hands on Holly Berry. So maybe it could have been Wesley. But right now, the rumor mill is going with Diddy. I think that some of this coded language um, is leading to Diddy. But again, Diddy has denied all allegations. It's important for me to say that. But let's get into the shit of all these people defending Diddy. Um, I know you guys know Toure. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this from this morning, but I want to start here before we get into the people who defended him. Personally disturbed many years ago. Okay. I, I, I know this man well enough to call him and say, Hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I, and he said, yes. And they were 
flying around, one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever, on the jet, in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? He wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out, and this is a male, yeah. and said that uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh-huh. And the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like, oh, this is this is God. how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I-, I was personally disturbed many years ago. Okay. I-, I I know this man well enough to call him and say, hey, I need a favor. Yeah. And this might have been 10, 12 years ago that I called him and say, hey, I have a family member who I want you to hire them as an intern. Yeah. And uh, I have never talked about this publicly. And I, and he said, yes. And they were flying around one of the interns, Atlanta, Miami, whatever on the jet in the house, whatever. And then the internship stopped abruptly, like three or four months into it. Yeah. And I spoke to my family member, like, well, what happened? And they wouldn't say, yeah. And I'm like, what, what do you, why did it end? He wouldn't yeah. say. And years later, they finally came out and this is a male yeah. and said that, uh, Puff had said, come home, stay the night with me, or the internship is over. And they said, absolutely not. He said, absolutely not. Uh-huh. And the internship ended. Uh, but from there, I was like, oh, like oh, this is, this is God. how it goes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I-, I was personally disturbed. So I had to let you guys hear that before we get into the people who are defending him. Um, Ludwig Borst, they, they did a movie, but they never dated. Okay. I looked it up while I was, while this was going on, J Lo says that Wesley had been trying to push up on her multiple times, inviting her out and trying to kiss her. And she said no to all of his advances and he got mad. That's the story. We, you know, you know, y'all can do with that as you may. <laughs> but um, yeah, I knew I'd heard something. I knew that they did money train together, but I couldn't remember exactly what I had heard. But anyway, let's 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 keep going. So this is something that I totally believe. This man has been an activist. He has been in the spotlight for years. He has a really good relationship. If he said that that happened to his relative, I believe it. And kudos to the relative for not giving in to peer pressure. Who did he just mention? This was a young relative of his who was interning for Diddy. Y'all know who else interned for Diddy? Laverne Cox. I wonder if Diddy ever tried to push up on her. (laughs) Uh, If you don't know who Laverne Cox is, she got her start on, um, she got her start on, I want to work for Diddy. Let me show you guys real quick. Technically, I think, I think she was one of the first like trans people on television, but her start was, I want to work for Diddy and he was not providing them wardrobe or anything like that. Cause she doesn't, she doesn't look like this when, when she was on that show. <laughs> um, Oh yeah. She's also on, she got, um, she got really big on orange is the new black, but on, I want to work for Diddy. He treated them like the same way he treated making the band season one on some go get me a piece of cheesecake from across the bridge kind of stuff. But anyway, off topic, let's move on to the people defending him. In the replay, let me know if you believe what um, Tori had to say. We, now we got Slim Thug. If you don't know who Slim Thug is, then you're not from the South. Um, if you're from the South, you're going to know um, Scarface, Slim Thug, Mike Jones, Paul Wall, Bundy, Beyonce. If you're not from the South, well, you probably might just know Beyonce. <laughs> but this is what Slim Thug had to say. A black man who came so far, almost to a billion dollars, fall down. That's our inspiration for It ain't too many of us. I don't want to see. They took Kanye down. We forgot about Kanye. And the good thing he uh able to do his own man that's how i look at it man we losing another billionaire over allegations at this point still ain't no criminal charges 
You know what I'm saying? We only got about one billion out left. Who Jay Z? That's the only fucking love. Everybody else. Let's take the per off of it and and who that person is, right? Man, listen. If look at who is wishing this dude fail, you know what I'm saying? It's his own people. It's his own people cheering him, laughing, and did he did it and coming up with new slogans for him. It's his own people, man. Like, so take note of this. Man, you would think the mother he thought a year or two ago when we were popping Ciroc, he thought that we would ride or die for him, man. Like, he thought that the motherfucking world of hip hop was now here we go. You saying a year ago you thought somebody was ride or die because he was providing you with Ciroc alcohol and putting money in his pocket and allegedly using that in his Rico. Like, what are we saying here? I understand people who say, why is it that, you know, when black men go down, they go down in such a manner. It's like a, it's like a full blaze. Everybody's on them. And I say, well, technically, were you watching white media when white media exposed Epstein and Weinstein? Um, were you there when Rose McGowan talked about how her mental health was affected and she was never able to be the same after Weinstein did that to her documentary after documentary. I think sometimes we get into a space where we, you know, look at the same things and listen to the same people all the time. And if they have something or they have a spin that is absolutely just one sided, then you think it's bigger than it is when in actuality, Diddy is a mega star. So the same thing that helped him rise will be the same thing that helps him fall if he's guilty of these crimes. So I don't think that we should be putting it on, well, this is a black man and the world is trying to take a black man down. I think you should be looking at, if you're going to talk on it, both sides, the facts, the complaints. You have all of these complaints and the only thing Diddy is saying is everybody's trying to shake me down. I think that that should give you some indication that maybe Diddy has something more to hide than the people who are now coming out and saying he did these things to me. I think it's just kind of short-sighted to just defend him because you think you were sipping Ciroc. And if Diddy is the only person you have to look up to as a black man who has been become successful, then you probably need to open up your horizons a little bit because there's more people out there. And Diddy didn't even make his money from the rap game. Then he made his money, like he became a multi, multi, multi millionaire from the liquor business because he had people like you shouting it out in your songs and he'll send you a case and then you'll rap about it or you want to invite to one of his parties. But it's, it's not like that has bonded you to this man so much that you would defend these actions, these allegations. Stay down and over you know especially without him having a case like especially without him having a case he would think hey man they're gonna rap me I, I live for this hip-hop shit. i lived and died this shit. the hip-hop community is gonna ride for my innocence he would assume i'm sure say if he did that then whatever he get he get but so far i haven't seen no criminal charges so out for that i'm gonna just sit back and hope for the best you know I don't want to see nobody go down, man. And for people to celebrate that, love that, want to see that, is weird to me, man. So, like, if I don't want to see a black man who came so far almost to a billion dollars fall down. That's our inspiration for It ain't too many of us. I don't want to see they took Kanye down. We forgot about Kanye. And the good thing he uh able to do his own, man. That's how I look at it, man. We losing another billionaire. Over allegations at this point, still ain't no criminal charges. I did we lose Kanye, y'all? Y'all can put it in the chat. Did we lose Kanye? I feel like Kanye, Kanye became a different person once he married into the Kardashians. Any Chicago that was left in his voice was gone. Everything was removed. He went from Kanye from Chicago to a full-on Kardashian from the Valley. In LA. <laughs> His music, you know, I do think Kanye musically is one of the top um, producers, rappers of our time. But in terms of losing Kanye, Kanye lost himself in the Kardashians. And I'm not taking credit for that. 
Um, Booty Butter says, congrats, Mims. You put in the work. <laughs> I don't know who Booty Butter is. <laughs> but, but I'm not meek. And we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. We got some more. Uh, Tina Williams, thank you so much for the super sticker. Reality T with Crystal Marie, just trolling too, allegedly. Thank you, uh, Crystal Marie. The Trinity Divine Eclectic 333 says, you are doing amazing work, Mims. I absolutely love your channel. Side note, I hope they get them all. We have to stop supporting nonsense. Y'all, and this is just the beginning. I started going through, I started going through a lot of these lawsuits that we have all been like following. Jamie Foxx hasn't even really done anything with his lawsuit. Like literally nothing. It's just still sitting there. So I don't know if people are trying to wait to see how much is going on with Diddy, but Cuba Gooding, we're gonna go over that. Cuba Gooding had four different lawsuits. And I guess being the fact that he's like at this point kind of like marginally known actor maybe that's how he got away with it without it becoming a big firestorm because you had diddy steve harvey steve harvey's another one that's extremely excited now that <laughs> the heat is off him and marjorie because they got it for a minute um thank you the trinity tanya oh thank you for becoming a member we got to do that member live if I have time today, it'll just be like some background stuff talking about like what's been going on in the YouTube streets and kind of like behind the scenes of how people interact with other YouTubers. And if it is Kumbaya or not, um, we got to do that live soon. Oh, uh, Reality T. Oh, thank you. Congrats on 150,000 subscribers. And if you're just coming in the room, as of this live, we hit 150,000 subscribers. So I, I really appreciate all of you. Thank you guys so much for spending time with me and um, taking this ride with me. I guess the I guess the new, uh, maybe 160 is going to be the next goal. Um, Beverly, thank you so much. Um, she says she loves it here. Godchild, thank you for becoming a member. Lisa McDuffie, thank you for becoming a member. And Urban Educated, thank you for the super sticker. But let's get back into this. Because now we got Tyrese opening his mouth. Um, Tyrese says, what I can't do and what I won't do is downplay the laughter, the fun, the energy, the inspiration, the touching, the groping, the licking. He didn't say that. <laughs> he didn't. Sorry. Let me start over. Let me start over. My bad. Y'all, I, I got to be serious here. Let me start over. <clears throat> Tyrese says, I can't do and what I won't do is downplay the laughter, the fun, the energy, the inspiration, the award shows, the studio sessions, the most legendary parties, the sex dungeons, and events I've ever attended in my life. And <laughs> allegedly. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I take it back. My bad. I didn't. I take it back. Is it too late to take it back? Should I read it the right way? <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> uh, Angela says, Mims, how do you become a member? I've been subscribed, but I don't see the option for membership. If you go into the description of the video, there's a link to become a member. Thank you, Angela. Okay, I'm done. I, I'm, I, um, the most legendary parties and events I've ever attended in my life. And I also can't act as if my high school backyard parties throughout South Central LA wasn't the craziest, par craziest parties ever because of the bad boy on slew of hit record. I don't condone nor do I support abuse, bullying, sexually, sexual assault, or anything that is currently being alleged. But what I can do is turn the is turn the blinds on how much this I, i'm reading it as he's saying uh i'm reading it as he has written it but some of it is grammatically wrong so i'm trying to correct it in real time but what i can't do is turn the blinds on how much this man means to me and all of us and what he has done for the community of music and culture don't worry i'm the only one crazy enough to jump out there and say what most of you want to say 
but you don't have the balls to do so because it's very normal for people to be going through a rough patch and we all sit back and make a mockery out of it. But I'm not going to do that. I'm praying for Diddy. I'm praying for Diddy. And I guess he means and his kids, his family, his mother, and all of the alleged victims that's in the middle of, of trying to simply have their voices to be heard. So are you backpedaling? You're praying for Diddy, but you're also praying for his accusers. So does this keep him at the parties, y'all? Does this keep him in a safe space where if Diddy does have something on him from one of these parties, that Diddy won't say anything because he actually has a celebrity speaking out for him? I don't know what to make of this. I love this brother. He's been nothing but kind and generous towards me. And that's the way I feel praying and praying for more of a better outcome of all this is happening. What would be the better outcome? Because either Diddy is going to win or the victim alleged victims are going to win. So what would be the outcome? I, I'm really honestly trying to, to figure it out. What's the end game here? Who are you actually in support of? Do you have any entanglements? I don't get I don't get it. Now, Tyrese has recently been in the headlines. You guys know I don't just talk about Diddy. Tyrese has recently been in the headlines because due to the writer's strike, he is now alleging that he can't pay his child support. But he was also from the very beginning saying that $10,000 a month is too much for a child. Although I think $10,000 a month is a lot of money, Tyrese has been very vocal about the fact that he'll just go to Home Depot and buy a million dollars and start a project at his house. He had like, uh, I think that they said he had like a whole Benihana set up just in his backyard. So I don't know how much credence I'm giving Tyrese. Tyrese is, it seems as though Tyrese has had a few struggles of his own recently. So I'm not going to really just go in on him. Um, you know, maybe Tyrese, I don't know, maybe Tyrese is just kind of like looking for himself. I don't know. But he did not want to pay the child support or the amount of child support from the very beginning. But you're buying your new woman a hundred thousand dollar Range Rover. Child support is based on how much you make. So if you are making two million, three million dollars a year, your child, based on whatever um state you're in, is gonna get a portion of that. So, you know. Okay. Anyway, don't tell people you got a Benihana in your backyard and then they won't <laughs> they won't be coming after your money. Uh now we got Stevie J. Stevie J wants y'all to know that no weapon formed against him, no weapon formed against Diddy, and no weapon formed against Diddy's sons will prosper. But Stevie J was also one of the producers on Diddy's last album. So perhaps he was actually the one of the people who was getting paid. We also know that Stevie J got, what was it, like a million dollar settlement from Faith Evans. I believe she had to pay him. Let me look that up. Faith Evans pays Stevie J settlement. I think it was like a million, but she's paying spousal support. So that's why Stevie is so happy and excited. <laughs> That's exactly why he can go to all the Diddy parties and his wife still has to pay him spousal support. Now let's get in to Cuba Gooding Jr. Because this man having four different lawsuits, all for the same stuff. And a lot of the lawsuits sound similar. Yo, let me get to a few more of these super... Um, Booty Butter says, allegedly, he paints you on purpose, then giggles. Are we, oh my God, are we talking about, are you talking about Diddy? I'm here today. No, no, this is the party. Oh, wow, I just come back when everybody get here. No, no, stay. <laughs> no, no, it's cool. I just come back later when everybody get I here. said stay. <laughs> oh, 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 Diddy, all right, I'm here. Party with me, Daddy. <laughs> I'm the first one, you okay, uh. <laughs> where, where am I at? It's just me and you in here today. Hmm? Yeah. Now come dance with Brother Love. I mean, ain't, ain't no music playing right what now. Did mean music? I said dance for Brother Love! Okay. 
Click that. <laughs> I don't know what did he be doing. Oh, uh, okay. Andrew uh, Gabor says, "Bang as in pistol." Congrats on 150k. Thank you, Gabor. I appreciate that. Um, Beverly, she says she loves it here. Thanks for being a member. God's Child, thank you for becoming a member. Lisa McDuffie, thank you for becoming a member. Urban Educated, thank you so much for the super sticker. Uh, Keisha, not one of his celeb allies said, I don't believe it. Because they haven't been to the parties. <laughs> they would be lying. <laughs> Black Swan, I can't believe so many people are so impressed with people and their money, even when it seems like they lack morals. Money changes a lot of people's opinions about you. Trust me. Trust me. Uh, thanks for that super sticker or super chat. Uh, Italian girls, thank you so much for being a member. Love you, Mims. Lily Sweet, thank you for for your super sticker. Uh, Dina, um, congrats. Slim Thug is an idiot. He got a C in College Hill. Damn. Not you. Uh, not he didn't pass on College Hill. <laughs> I like Slim Thug, honestly, y'all. Well, at least I like his music. Um, Andrea Wynn, thank you so much for your super sticker. But let's get into Cuba, y'all. Let's get into Cuba because this was some hint. So what we learned about Cuba was that this gentleman said that Cuba had tried to get inappropriate with him. So I'll give you a quick reminder of what he said. Um, throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones is under an implied work for hire agreement. He was not compensated. Where is it? Hold on. It might be this one. So Mr. Combs and Cuban Gooding Jr. moments before Mr. Jones was assaulted. Uh, Mr. Combs attempts to pass off Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Jones was grooming him to pass him off to his friends. This fear became reality when Mr. Combs introduced Mr. Jones to Cuba Gooding Jr. while they were on Mr. Combs' yacht. During the introduction, Mr. Combs suggested that Cuba get to know Mr. Jones better. He then left him alone in a makeshift studio in the yacht. As evidenced by the video, of which screenshots are embedded below, Cuba Gooding Jr. began touching, groping, and fondling Mr. Jones' legs, his upper inner thighs near his groin, the small of his back near his buttocks, and his shoulders. I can't hear the word buttocks without thinking of um, Forrest Gump. <laughs> uh, Mr. Jones was extremely uncomfortable and proceeded to lean away from Mr. Gooding Jr. He rejected his advances, and Mr. Cuban Gooding Jr. did not stop until Mr. Jones forcibly pushed him away. The following is screenshots from the encounter with Mr. Gooding. Okay. So that's what he alleged. Now y'all, when I started doing the research on all these other women who had the same allegations, um, I want to start here. We'll go over them pretty briefly, but I want you guys to see this. This is actual court documents. Cause if you don't know me, I will actually pull the court records. If you're new to the channel, <clears throat> it says, Defendant pleaded guilty to a charge relating to the conduct to which he subjected plaintiff. Notably, at defendant's plea hearing on April 13, 2022, the following exchange occurred. Um, also, um, you guys hit the like button. It is a free way to support the channel, and it also lets YouTube know that we're here. So I would appreciate it if you guys hit that like button. We got like 6,300 in the chat. Um, let's try to get to at least three or 4,000 likes. It says the court that you were in, County of New York, on or about September 9, 2018, to about September 10, 2018, intentionally and for no legitimate purpose, forcibly touched the sexual or intimate parts of an individual for the purpose of degrading and abusing such person and for the purpose of gratifying your sexual desire. Is that true? Cuba Gooding's response, because he's a defendant here, yes, your honor. The court, tell me in your words what did you what what you did, defendant, yes. Your Honor, I said, I kissed the waitress on her lips. The court, and would, and was that without her permission and authority? Defendant, yes, Your Honor. The court, and did you do so on your own personal gratification? Cuba Gooding, yes, Your Honor. So I thought it was important that y'all see that in his own words, he has admitted to this in the past and had to admit to it in court. And he did some real douchey shit because... He even tried to use that, do you know who I am? And I'm not going to come to your establishment anymore. 
like the paparazzi are waiting outside for Cuba Gooding Jr. He has literally turned into his character from Jerry Maguire, except now he's kind of like old and, you know, he's that older guy in the club who still takes his shirt off in Miami and sweats through it and wears Navy symbols on his neck. But he wasn't in the Navy, I don't think. That's who Cuba Gooding is these days. But that's in his own words, guys. So let me start here. <clears throat> One of the court cases. Um, let's see. In or around 2013, plaintiff lived and worked in New York. Plaintiff met a friend at dinner and thereafter went to a restaurant. About an hour after arriving, plaintiff and her friend went to VIP section. While the VIP, while in the lounge, plaintiff was approached by Cuba Gooding Jr., who introduced himself and invited her and her friend to join him and his friends at their table. Plaintiff and her friend joined. Um, Cuba. So he told the plaintiff that he and his friends were going to the Mercer and invited her and her friend to join them for drinks. By way of background, the Mercer is a hotel, which is also includes a restaurant and bar on the ground level. Plaintiff understood that she and her friend would be joining defendant and his friends at the restaurant bar. The Mercer is approximately a quarter mile from the restaurant where they were. Defendant then got up and left the table. Plaintiff was talking to someone when a man appeared to be a security guard, approached the table and told her that defendant wanted her to meet him outside in a cab. Plaintiff spoke with her friend, and her friend confirmed that they would meet for drinks shortly. Plaintiff left the restaurant through the front entrance and joined defendant in a cab. When they arrived, which is only a short drive, defendant told plaintiff to get out at the side entrance so that he could get out of a different entrance to avoid paparazzi. What paparazzi is following Cuba Gooden Jr.? But okay. Um, <laughs> once inside the Mercer, plaintiff stood in the lobby. Once defendant saw her, he motioned for plaintiff to join him in the elevator. Defendant told plaintiff that he needed to change his clothes. Plaintiff suggested that she would, she would wait downstairs. However, defendant told her he would be quick. This is the same thing that allegedly happened with Jane Doe versus Russell Simmons. Oh no, I'll be quick. Just come on up to my room. Come up, up to my apartment. Allegedly. Um, defendant's hotel, hotel room was on the fifth floor. Defendant and plaintiff exited the elevator and entered his room, which was down the hallway from the elevator bank. Once they entered, plaintiff told the defendant that her friend was joining them for drinks downstairs in an effort to suggest that they leave to head back down soon and politely convey that she did not have any interest in staying in his room. Nevertheless, defendant put on music, Mumford and Sons to be specific, and took a position between her and the hotel room door. Defendant then began taking his clothes off. Upon defendant beginning to undress, plaintiff told him that she had to leave to meet her friend downstairs and began standing up from the edge of the bed where she was sitting and attempted to move towards the door. As plaintiff attempted to stand up, defendant blocked her from the door and pushed her onto the bed. Plaintiff was wearing a halter top dress that evening. Defendant finished taking his clothes off. He was now completely unclothed and forcibly and without consent put one hand in her halter top to touch plaintiff's breast and one hand up her dress. Plaintiff told him no and tried to push his hands away. However, defendant ignored her and forcibly stroked her private area under her underwear. At this point, defendant became physically aggressive, and each time plaintiff pushed defendant's hands away, he forcibly placed them back on her. Now, remember, when Lil Rod told us what Cuba was doing, he said that Cuba did not actually stop until, or he alleged that Cuba did not actually stop until he was able to forcibly get him off. Here we have a woman who's been having some drinks and she's alleging that she, you know, she couldn't do it. And keep in mind, Cuba is, I think, well into his 50s now and little, little Rod, I, I believe, is in his 30s. So he, as a younger man, he's having to forcibly stop this man. So imagine being a woman alone in the room by yourself and a, a former top actor is doing this. Um, plaintiff told defendant no numerous times, but he wouldn't stop. Defendant then forcibly pushed plaintiff on, onto her back in the bed during which defendant without invitation or consent aggressively removed plaintiff's underwear and, you know, took advantage of her. He pinned her down on the bed, holding down her arms. He did not even put on a rubber. 
um and then you know he finished there's certain things that i can't say on youtube guys so that's why i can't do this <clears throat> Plaintiff remained on the bed after he finished and put her and put her, you know, top back into her halter top and covered herself. Immediately after he finished, defendant went to the bathroom. Plaintiff began to crawl in order to get off the bed and leave. However, defendant returned from the bathroom, still unclothed, and got onto the bed. As plaintiff was attempting to get off the bed and get away from defendant, defendant, without her consent, got on top of plaintiff from behind and Put it in the back door. Um, defendant grabbed plaintiff's hips so as to prevent her from leaving the bed. Um, plaintiff told defendant no many times, but defendant did not stop. Defendant finished again, laid on the bed. Plaintiff was afraid to move in fear that the defendant might do it a third time. Nevertheless, defendant fell asleep almost immediately, upon which plaintiff went to the bathroom to clean herself. At this point, she realized that defendant had woken up as she heard him rustling in the bed. Plaintiff was in fear that she might get R-worded again, told defendant she had to head downstairs in order to meet her friend, and hurriedly left the room. Once downstairs, plaintiff looked for her friend but could not find her. Plaintiff texted her friend and learned that her friend was still at the restaurant lounge they were at first met. The plaintiff then returned to the restaurant lounge by cab. Uh, once the restaurant lounge, she met up with her friend and shortly and thereafter went home. So that was one of the people. That was one of the people who have allegations about Cuba Gooding Jr. Um, let's see. We got a couple. Um, Lady Chef, thank you for joining the membership. Big Red, um, you are the best memes. Thank you, Big Red. I appreciate you. Carol Chamberlain on the road to 2K. Let's go, Mims. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. And I, I do see you guys that have been in here from the beginning. Um, like Carol. Do the right thing says, I've been in your bushes since you since you were a little content creator. 150 today, 200 by December. Thank you. Do the right thing. Come out the bushes sometimes, especially when we do um, especially when we do open panels. Guys, I do open panels where I let y'all say whatever you want to say about whatever the topic at hand is. I feel like we low-key have to do an open panel on Candace Owens. She's been in the news lately, and there she has a lot of support, and she has a lot of hate. So I feel like we should be doing an open panel on her pretty soon. Peaches, congratulations on 150K. Peaches has been a member since the very beginning, and she's also been a subscriber since the beginning. I appreciate you. Uh, just me, you have been putting in the work for the past two weeks. Great job as always. Thank you um chrissy says oh i missed that 150k congratulations son thank you y'all i still gotta give away this tumbler if you're new to this channel i like be buying y'all stuff that i think y'all might like this y'all never remind me to do this members this tumbler this christian louboutin tumbler is still i'm gonna give this to one of you guys so by the end of this week we need to give this away so i can mail it and i still need to mail that alexander mcqueen bracelet to the the young lady who won it and you don't have to do anything for, to to win these things. And I still have that um, Versace keychain that's gonna go to somebody, anybody. I still gotta, you know, I'll be buying y'all stuff just when I see it that I think, you know, you guys might like. It's just like it's just a Versace keychain. So this one is for anybody. So by the end of this week, I'll do that giveaway too, so I can get this mailed out. I just be losing track of time. Anyway, um, okay. So let's see. Let's do the next one. This one's quicker. <sighs> okay. Plaintiff was over the age of 18. Um, she was at the Magic Hour rooftop bar and lounge. Defendant along defendant, along with his girlfriend, sat down in a seating area in the section of the rooftop, meaning Cuba and his girlfriend. Cuba was seated to the left of his girlfriend. Shortly after they sat down, plaintiff approached defendant and his girlfriend and sat next to his girlfriend on the girlfriend's right side in order to meet and talk to the defendant. The girlfriend was seated in between plaintiff and defendant. This was the first time plaintiff had ever met defendant. Within seconds of plaintiff sitting down, defendant reached across his girlfriend and placed his right hand on plaintiff's left thigh. Doesn't that sound similar to what little Rob was going through? Um... Allegedly. 
he placed his hands on plaintiff's left thigh. Then approximately nine seconds after that, defendant, without consent or permission, began touch touching plaintiff's left breast. Excuse me. Plaintiff stated in court nearly three years later, um, with respect to this incident, so you can imagine my surprise when I saw a flash of movement and felt his hand on my breast, groping it and feeling around on it as if I was a piece of meat. In response, plaintiff grabbed defendant's hand in order to remove it from her breast, to which defendant then took her hand, put it up to his mouth, and tried to kiss it. It's seeming like this man has absolutely like no control, or maybe maybe his behavior is enhanced in you know, some way. If you're catching my, if you're catching it. Oh, and guys, don't forget you can follow me on Instagram at Make It Make Sense Now. Um, yeah. In response, plaintiff grabs defendant hand and orders her move it from her breast, to which defendant then took her hand, put it up to his mouth, and tried to kiss it. Plaintiff made contact with security staff shortly following this incident to complain of defendant's actions. Plaintiff also contacted the police that evening and then made an official police report at the police station in the wee hours of the next morning. Four days following this incident, on June 13, 2019, defendant was arrested. Defendant was in charge with inter alia forcibly touching a crime. Defendant admitted the conduct alleged by plaintiff and stated, um, I subjected the complainant, Kelsey Harbour, to non-consensual physical contact. So he admitted it. I don't know what it is about these celebrities who just feel like because you've been on television and because you have some money, you can do anything to anybody. I don't get it, y'all. Like, I, I low-key, I do not understand. So we did that one, this one, this one. This is another lady. So far, Lil Rod is the only man, but this is another lady. Um, plaintiff was working at Lavo Restaurant in New York as a waitress. Um... In the evening of September 9th, defendant and a group visit Lavo and got a table. This section where defendant was with his group or sitting was originally signed to a co-worker of plaintiffs. However, this co-worker asked plaintiff to wait on his table after defendant had subjected her to inappropriate behavior years before. Cuba! So you are developing a reputation allegedly around New York. Waitresses don't even want to get the tips that are associated with the celebrity because they are alleging that they know what you do. So much so that she hid from him when he entered the restaurant. Nevertheless, somewhat naively, plaintiff agreed. Shortly after plaintiff began waiting on his table, and while she was serving defendant drinks, he, without consent or permission, put his mouth up to plaintiff's and forced his tongue in her mouth. For the conduct, defendant was charged with inter alia forcible touching for actions against a plaintiff. Okay, and then I think there's one more. Was that all four? I, that might that might have been all four, y'all. Oh no, here's the here's the fourth one. Um, on. October 24, 2018, Plaintiff was a server at Tile Nightclub, a popular Manhattan lounge. At 4.20, as Plaintiff was waiting at the nightclub's bar to complete her end of shift, Defendant approached Plaintiff and pinched her right buttocks. Plaintiff confronted Defendant, telling him not to touch her. Defendant responded, "Oh, that's no fun, proceeding to touch Plaintiff's arm and attempting to touch the rear of Plaintiff's body. Plaintiff deflected Defendant's hand. Defendant made a further attempt to touch her rear of Plaintiff's body, causing Plaintiff to step away from him. Plaintiff then asked defendant to leave. Yet again, defendant attempted to touch the rear of plaintiff's body. Plaintiff again moved away. Defendant then announced that he will never return to the nightclub again and, and departed the club. That's what I was telling y'all about douchebag behavior. You are assaulting somebody and you mad because they're not interested in you? This is what he's, this is what he's looking like to these women. He's... <laughs> A dirty old man is what it's giving. And it always seems to be people who are working for him or, you know, like a waitress or somebody who's in the service industry. I wonder if he feels like he can get away with that. He did with that other girl because she said that she just didn't want to wait his table anymore. So she hid from him. You shouldn't have to hide from somebody at your job. 
first off, your job should be protecting you. So you have a lawsuit against him and you have a lawsuit against your job for not protecting you. Um, so this is the kind of stuff that gives credence to what, in my opinion, what Lil Rod was saying. You have this man who you feel Diddy is trying to use to groom you. That's this picture is Cuba and Diddy. It just this crew just seems so slimy to me, y'all. I don't know what it is. I know Diddy's parties were what everybody wanted to go to, but it it just it it gives me scamming. It gives me dirty. It gives me a date with them would come with like guaranteed penicillin. That's what. <laughs> I don't know. The more we find out about all these people. It, mm -mm. uh angela thank you so much for the becoming a member um c fuzz love says please don't pop your brain trying to make sense of something tyrese said and i won't uh rosa said j-lo is famous because uh tommy matola was was a get back at mariah damn i didn't know she dated matola um paul nerd thank you for becoming a member and black swan thank you for becoming a member so y'all it, it gives you a leave with lauren <laughs> The slime ball convention. <laughs> um, that was Stevie J. No, that was not Stevie J in that tape. The person in that tape um looks like Stevie J. And Little Rod alleged that he showed it to him as if it was Stevie J. But the person in the tape is actually this guy. Because Diddy, you're going to jail. <laughs> you're not going to jail. <laughs> That's the guy in that tape. So, um, y'all, I still have to, I still got to release that video. I did like a short video with Dimitri, a, a top attorney in New York who does criminal defense. I'll release that probably tonight just as a short video. Check that out. He kind of breaks down exactly what happened in the raid, what's normal about it, and how we should be thinking it. Because I'm technically a layman. Um, I do have access to attorneys and I do have access to private investigators. That's why I call on them to when I get these legal briefs and I'm like, how do you interpret this? But um, I should drop that a little bit later today or if at the latest tomorrow morning. Um, Jamie, thanks for becoming a member. Luna, thank you for becoming a member. So, guys, I got to head out. You guys have a good day. I'll keep you guys updated if anything else pops off in the replay gang. Please let me know if any of this is coming as a surprise to you about Cuba, do you think that Jennifer Lopez was talking about Diddy when she did her documentary about somebody who was putting her hand, their hands on her? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I appreciate you guys. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Let's, let's get to 155,000. I don't know. I'm just playing. Um, but thank you guys for being here. Have a good day. <sighs> Diddy. Diddy do it. Diddy don't pee on me, whatever his name is. <laughs>